I ate of for asking my girlfriend to choose between me and her male best friend? I never imagined that a relationship would unravel like this. When I first met Sarah, everything seemed so simple, so easy. We met through mutual friends at a birthday party. And I was instantly drawn to her warmth, her smile, her infectious energy. She was one of those people who could light up a room without even trying. It didn't take long for us to connect. We went on a few dates. And before I knew it, we were spending every weekend together. Things moved fast, but it felt natural, like we were meant to be. Sarah had this best friend, Jake. He came up in conversation pretty early on. She made it clear that he was an important part of her life. Someone she'd been close to since college. At first, I didn't think much of it. I've always been the kind of guy who believes in trust. Who doesn't want to be the jealous or controlling type? Sarah and Jake were close. Sure, but they'd known each other long before I came into the picture. I figured I had no right to feel threatened by their friendship. But as the months passed, something started gnawing at me. It was subtle at first, little things. Small moments where I began to feel like I was intruding on their world. Jake and Sarah had this way of communicating that I wasn't part of. Inside jokes, knowing glances, shared memories that I couldn't relate to. They spent a lot of time together. More than I expected. Dinners, movie nights, even spontaneous drives late at night. There were times when they would hang out. And I wouldn't even be invited. When I did tag along, it often felt awkward. Like I was the third wheel in my own relationship. I tried to brush it off. I told myself that they were just close friends. That there was nothing to worry about. But it wasn't just the amount of time they spent together. It was the way Jake acted around Sarah. The way he texted her constantly. Even when we were supposed to be spending time together. He'd call her, babe, and, sweetheart, in these messages. And when I brought it up to Sarah. She laughed it off. She said it was just their thing. That they'd been calling each other those names for years and that it didn't mean anything. But to me. It meant something. It made me feel like I wasn't the only important man in her life. Then there was the night I stayed over at Sarah's place and woke up in the middle of the night to find her on FaceTime with Jake. It was 2 a.m. And she was giggling, whispering so she wouldn't wake me. It felt like a punch to the gut. When I asked her about it the next morning, she brushed it off, saying Jake needed someone to talk to. But what about me? Why did he get the late night conversations while I was just there? Asleep. Like some background character in their story? I didn't want to overreact. But things kept getting worse. The final straw came when Sarah and I had been planning a weekend getaway for our one-year anniversary. We'd been talking about it for months, just the two of us. No distractions, a chance to really connect. But out of nowhere, Jake invited Sarah to a concert on the same weekend. It wasn't just any concert, either. It was a band that Sarah and Jake both loved. And when she asked me if we could postpone our trip so she could go to the concert with Jake. I was floored. Our anniversary, something we had been looking forward to could just be rescheduled for Jake? I couldn't believe it. It was like I didn't even matter. That was when I told Sarah I couldn't take it anymore. I asked her to set some boundaries with Jake. No more pet names. No more hanging out one-on-one -on -one all the time. And definitely no more prioritizing him over our relationship. I thought it was a reasonable request. But Sarah didn't see it that way. She blew up at me. Calling me controlling and insecure. She said that I knew Jake was part of her life when we started dating and that I was trying to change her now. Jake, of course, had his say in the matter. He told Sarah that I was being toxic, that I was trying to manipulate her, and Sarah sided with him. She told me that I was overreacting, that nothing had ever happened between them, and that I was blowing things out of proportion. It was like she couldn't see how much it was hurting me. All I wanted was for her to prioritize us, to make me feel like her boyfriend instead of just some side character in her life with Jake. But instead, I was the villain. Sarah stopped talking to me giving me the silent treatment, and I started questioning everything. Was I really being unreasonable? Was I the problem here? I couldn't tell anymore. A few days later, Sarah came over to talk. I was bracing myself for a breakup. I had gone over the conversation in my head a thousand times, preparing for the moment when she would say she couldn't choose between me and Jake. But instead, she surprised me. She told me she had cancelled her plans with Jake for the concert. She said she had realized, after our last conversation, how serious I was about this and that it made her think about everything. She admitted she had been selfish. That she had been taking our relationship for granted. For the first time in a long time. She was choosing me. She apologized for everything, not just for the concert. But for all the times she had ignored my feelings. Dismissed my concerns. And put Jake ahead of us. 
She said she didn't want to lose me. That she had been blind to how much it hurt me. It was emotional. I could see how much it scared her that I was ready to walk away. And part of me was relieved that she finally understood. But another part of me felt numb. It was like too little. Too late. After months of feeling like I was competing with Jake. It was hard to believe that things could really change. We spent that weekend together. As planned. We didn't go on the big anniversary trip. But we stayed in. Cooked dinner together. And had long. Emotional conversations about our relationship. About Jake. About the future. It felt like we were trying to patch up something that had already started to fall apart. There were moments when I thought maybe we could make it work. That maybe Sarah was sincere and willing to change. But there were also moments when the hurt felt too deep to repair. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had already checked out of the relationship. That this apology was just a band-aid over a wound that had been festering for too long. By the end of the weekend. I was emotionally drained. Sarah seemed to think we were heading in the right direction. That we had turned a corner. But I wasn't so sure. I told her we needed to take a break. To give each other some space to reflect on whether this relationship was something we both wanted to fight for. She didn't take it well. She cried. Begged me not to go. Said she'd proved to me that she was serious about changing. But I needed space. I needed to clear my head without the constant push and pull of emotions that had defined our relationship for so long. I left that night and haven't spoken to her since. We agreed to give it a couple of weeks before making any decisions. But in my heart, I feel like I already know how this will end. Sarah's apology was genuine, but I'm not sure it's enough. I can't shake the feeling that I've already lost too much trust. That I've already distanced myself emotionally. Could she really set boundaries with Jake after everything? Could she really make me her priority after months of me feeling like an afterthought? These are the questions that keep running through my mind. I find it hard to believe that after months of begging for change, she's suddenly ready to give me what I've been asking for. It feels like a last-ditch effort to save something that might already be broken beyond repair. In the time since we've been apart, I've had a lot of time to think. I've realized how important it is to be with someone who values and respects you from the beginning. Not someone who makes you feel like you're competing for their attention. I'll always care about Sarah. But this whole situation has made me reevaluate what I want in a relationship. I want someone who makes me feel secure. Someone who doesn't have these blurred lines with other people. Someone who doesn't dismiss my feelings when I express them. Maybe Sarah can change. Maybe she really will set boundaries with Jake and make me her priority. But I don't know if I can wait around to find out. I don't know if I want to stay in a relationship where I feel like I've had to fight so hard just to feel valued. I guess that's the question I keep coming back to. Do I give her another chance? Or do I go through with the breakup and move on with my life? I'm leaning toward the latter. I don't want to be the guy who sticks around in a relationship out of hope that things will get better when deep down. I know they won't. It's hard, though. Walking away from someone you love is never easy. Even when you know it's the right thing to do. So here I am. Trying to figure out what comes next. Trying to decide if I should give Sarah the benefit of the doubt or if I should let go and move on. It's not an easy decision. And part of me wishes there was a clear answer. But I guess that's the thing about relationships, they're messy complicated, and sometimes, no matter how much you want things to work out, they just don't. I've spent so much time feeling like the third wheel in my own relationship. Feeling like I'm competing with someone who isn't even supposed to be in the running. I don't want to feel that way anymore. I don't want to have to beg for attention or ask someone to prioritize me. I deserve better than that. We all do. But knowing that and acting on it are two different things. It's one thing to recognize that a relationship isn't working. And it's another to actually let go. That's where I'm stuck, in the space between knowing and doing, between wanting to move on and still feeling tethered to what we had. I hope that in the next few weeks, I'll get some clarity. Maybe the time apart will help me see things more clearly. Maybe it'll help Sarah see things too. Or maybe, when we finally talk again, I'll realize that it's time to say goodbye for good. I don't know yet, but I do know this. I'm tired of feeling like I'm second place in my own relationship. I'm tired of feeling like I'm competing for someone's attention. I want something better, something real, and I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, that's not something I can have with Sarah.